This is Twit. Can I show you these? I have a Please. little story. I'd love to hear about I want to get more Micah in the show, so you can answer the next five calls. But okay. I, but I, I want to, because there's a story that goes with this. So I got an uh, email. Uh, I usually, I shouldn't respond to these, but I fall for this stuff all the time. From Denon, uh, which is a well-known stereo company. In fact, I have Denon receivers mm -hmm. throughout the house. So I paid attention. And they said, we've got these new super good earbuds, the Pearls. You should check them out. Pearl, P-E-R, capital L, stands for personal listening. But it turns out after I, and I bought them, 350 bucks. That's $150 more than my AirPods Pro. Yeah. So I thought, well. But less than the AirPods Max. <laughs> yeah, a lot less than the AirPods Max. But I thought, can you get better wireless sound? That's the key, wireless. So the first thing I'm going to say is, Wired is always better. Mm -hmm. You know, it, with the same uh, devices, if you have wired headphones. And 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 so if you have really good wired headphones, you're always going to get better sound because wireless has to compress. And in order to get the, you know, the sound through at a more limited bandwidth, sometimes they compress an awful lot. But that's when I went down the rabbit hole. And probably, Benito, you're aware of a company called Nura, N-U-R-A. About five years ago, they did a Kickstarter where they raised millions of dollars for s specialized Bluetooth headphones that would sound better. And they had a couple of secret sauces, one of which was that they would measure your ears kind of passively. You just sit there for a minute. They'd play some sounds. They'd measure your ears. And after they measured your ears, they would modify the sound of the headphones. They made over the ear and earbuds. They'd measure the sound of the headphones or modify it to give you better sound. Mm -hmm. So this is what they proposed as their personalized sound technology. The, the idea is they play a range of tones. They're Australian. Can you tell? <laughs> Into your cochlea, uses hearing information. and then they get it back somehow. I don't know how. They've got eight microphones on these things, but somehow they get it back and they say, oh, this is what your ear did. Now, it works pretty well, I got to say. I, I think I've seen that video before. As you? I'm looking at the reactions, yeah, I probably went to this page and yeah. thought about backing it. I did think about backing it, but then Denon bought this company. Actually, their parent company, Denon's parent company, Massimo, bought it a few months, uh, or maybe a year ago. And within a few months of buying it, they released these. These are identical in every way to the Neuro, NeuroTrues, except that they've now put the Denon <laughs> Uh, name on on the thing. Yeah, there even the little uh, pad is the same. Everything's the same. <laughs> so I thought, well, I, you know, I, I didn't get it in the first place. Let me talk about why you might want this. One is that technology, which they've rebranded Massimo, the parent company's uh, automatic sensing technology. So that is kind of fun. In fact, I'll show you on my phone. I can show you my... Now, I ran it a few times. I thought, well, if this really is doing the right thing, you would it should see. come up with the same result each time. Ooh. It kind of didn't. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but may, but I suppose that could also be because I was in a maybe a different environment. I don't know. It also, just like the air uh, pods, it it uh, it tests your um, uh, how the ear tips because it comes with a variety of ear tips and even like a little outside ring that goes on it, and it helps you choose the one that gets the best seal mm -hmm. here's the personalized curve now this is a little weird way of, of showing <laughs> yeah. it i've never seen anything quite like this looks like you dripped your pen ink on the yeah app. the theory is there's a circle there where orange is showing is where your deficit oh, is okay. so my deficit at 12 o'clock is oh, one of the frequencies and then it goes around these are all the frequencies so my deficits are here but i can hear better in these frequencies okay, right cool so this is the shape of my hearing curve according to the massimo System. automatic yeah. sensing and i have to say they give you a chance to listen default and personalized i've used this technology apple offers it as mm -hmm. well with the airpods pro you can do, do what is much more like a, a traditional audiologist hearing test where you hear tones in your left and right ear and you push a button when you hear it. Uh, Samsung offers something similar for uh, for Samsung's earbuds and on their Samsung phones. But those are all more traditional. This one, you just sit there for a while and listen to some tones. 
and it generates this. I have to say, it definitely improved. See, because I have, I, I find myself doubting myself when I'm doing those little tone tests. Right. I too much. I'm doing too much thinking about am it. Am I so, clicking right? Am yeah. I doing it right? Do, am I hearing it, or am I making it up in my head? So These something the that same, just does it automatically. Test I, I, my audiologist will give me when I go into to get hearing aids. So mm -hmm. it, you know, but this is different. This is something a little different, and I suspect somewhat less accurate. Otherwise, audiologists would probably start using this one. Right. So once you've got it customized, you put it in. And then you pair it. Now, this is where I ended up going down a rabbit hole because, as I said at the beginning, wired is always going to be better. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about Bluetooth here. Now, in order to understand what you're getting and what you're not getting, you have to understand Bluetooth codecs, compression, decompression algorithms. In the beginning, Bluetooth was designed, designed for those really silly Bluetooth headsets that Michael Douglas would wear, right? And, you know, in Wall Street, that kind of thing. Hello, and you, you know, you see people walking around wearing these all day. The sound quality was terrible. They were for one ear. They weren't for music. They were for phone calls. Eventually, the Bluetooth uh, SIG came up with A2DP, which is a stereo, high theoretically high-quality Bluetooth profile for music. And then underneath the A2DP, they started coming up with new ways of compressing. Uh, the bass compression, SBC, almost everything can do. It's not great. It's low bandwidth. It doesn't give you a whole lot of quality, but it's universal. Is Apple... Sorry, just to clarify. I S can't hear you. I've got <laughs> potatoes in my ear. Go ahead. Is SBC, that came after they started doing it's music, It's part right? of the A2TP, a so a it, dp So it was spec. still better than what originally first It was first better than came. headset, got yes. It. That's, that was my question. Okay. Yeah, it was musical. And in fact, a lot of times uh, you're listening to SBC when you pair oh. in your car, in a variety of different places. It's kind of the de facto that everybody uses. Got it. Apple decided to go their own way. So all the most recent Apple stuff uses AAC, mm -hmm. which is the same encoding that they use for the music when you listen to it. And in fact, they say it's AAC 256 kilobit, which is pretty good. Not CD quality, but pretty good. But that's the only choice you have. Sony has their LDAC compression. Also, they claim nearly lossless, very good. But the Bluetooth folks also created their own set a standard. Now you see why it's a rabbit hole. Wow, yeah. Called Aptex. <gasps> I've heard that been one. hearing about Aptex, mm -hmm. right? Aptex has a number of different uh, codex, different ways of doing it. Uh, and the latest one, uh, which is Aptex lossless, it was SBC. Oh, by the way, there was also MPEG-2, MP3, Apple's AAC. There was high efficiency AAC because one of the things, one of the, I should mention, one of the problems is you don't want a codec that takes a lot of energy either to encode on the phone side or to decode on the earbud side because battery it. is at a premium right so you you got to balance audio quality bandwidth and how much computation you have to do so all of these are ways to kind of balance all three of them there's also a, a track i think that's a sony thing but let's talk about aptex because aptex is not specific to anybody in general there's aptex uh hd which they clear, claim you're going to see this claim a lot in all these bluetooth codecs to be near lossless no. <laughs> There's Aptex Adaptive, which changes the encoding depending on the music. Oh. So if it's complex music, it says, well, you're going to need more bits. We're going to need more bits. <laughs> and we're going to do more computation. But then when the music is less complex, it will go down using less battery uh, and, and less bandwidth. So if you're doing a phone call, it probably doesn't need all of that extra. Yeah. Got Absolutely. It. That's interesting. So, yeah, so there's all these modifications. There are newer Aptexes now, and that's what intrigued me about this. There is something called Aptex Lossless, which the Aptex folks claim is as good as a CD. It is not nearly lossless. They say we are not compressing. Now, it is 1.1 to 1.2 megabits a second. Mm -hmm. so that's a lot of bandwidth going between your earbuds wow. and the phone. But there's a second problem with Aptex lossless. Aptex lossless. It was announced in 2021. No one supports it. <laughs> I've been looking. Dang. They're, actually, that's not true. The Asus ROG phones do. Some of the Zen phones do. Uh, a number of weird Chinese phones like the Xiaomi that you can't get support Aptex lossless. I don't own anything that supports Aptex lossless. So in theory, these earbuds are capable of better sound than I can get 
Wow. Now, they work fine with an iPhone, with a Samsung, with a Pixel, all of which can do some variation of A2DP, AAC or LDAC. Or, uh, and these, these supports every codec under the sun. Will it I, tell you which one it's using? It will, it will tell you if you look. I, I ended up buying something. Creative offers for under 50 bucks. this. This is the uh, weirdest little thing. It's a little dongle. It's a Bluetooth dongle, the BTW4. And you can plug this into anything that has a Type-C connector. So even though, you're, for instance, your laptop has, um, you know, a variety of Bluetooth codecs, might even have, you know, if it's an Apple laptop, it has pretty good AAC. You can plug this in. It's got a little button you can press on it. And it will let you go all the way up to Aptex Adaptive, oh. which is, you know, 279 to 420 kilobits. It's about half the bandwidth of Aptex lossless. So still not lossless. It's still not lossless. Now, I have played with this, uh -huh. and it sounds pretty damn good. Yeah. So now that you understand the codex, you it will be helpful to understand that because now you understand why if you have an iPhone, you don't care about Aptex. You don't care about lossless unless you're willing to go out and buy this little dongle and plug it into your iPhone or your or your laptop. I don't know if it works with an iPhone. It does work with Macs and PCs. Uh, if you have a PC that doesn't have Bluetooth, this is actually a nice way to add Bluetooth and pretty good quality. By the way, you might notice there's a couple of other things that it comes with. One is a microphone because this is intended oh. also to be plugged into PS4 or PS5 controllers or Nintendo Switch controllers to give you Bluetooth oh, uh, headphones, which is kind of cool. This is just an adapter for the Type-C to Type-A. But so now you have a microphone so you can talk to your gaming buddies and you have the Aptex adaptive anyway, the better quality Aptex among others. Um, so getting back to the Denons, this is the Pearl Pro. So probably all that really you really care about is the sound quality. But I have to point out, you're not going to hear the sound quality unless you have a device that's taking advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Do these sound better on an iPhone than the AirPods Pro? That's the first question I had to ask. Yes. Okay. It's a, so the hardware itself is better. It's better sounding hardware. It also has a, a, a feature which some people will like and some people won't like called immersion mode, which is really just bass boost. Got it. If okay. you like bass, this has incredible bass. This is the best bass I've heard on any wireless earbuds anywhere. You can turn it up even louder. If you don't like bass, the good news is you can turn it down and it can sound more normal. The zero mode is pretty he is heavy bass, mm -hmm. kind of a kind of uh, similar to the Beats. The high ends are excellent, very clear. The definition is good. The sound stage is good, but there's one thing the earbuds do. The AirPod Pros do that the uh, Denons do not do. Spatial. Oh. The AirPods are using. Oh, I'm sorry. I heard music, and that's because I have these in. <laughs> Are you playing happened? music now, Benita? <laughs> so spatial is interesting because Apple is supporting a standard, which is Dolby Atmos, right. Dolby, Dolby uh, Surround, which a lot of record companies have jumped on the bandwagon because it's Apple. And they said, oh, great. So they've remixed stuff in Dolby. These do not support Dolby. They support a virtualized spatial from a company called DRock. It's DRock's Virtuo. Hmm. And uh, it is not true spatial it's simulated spatial the advantage of that is it works with everything you listen to the disadvantage is it's not the record company or the producer or the artist who made the sound stage it's just being generated but it is a nice full sound stage doesn't do head tracking now i don't think head tracking is such a good feature like to be honest tracking, with you yeah. when i use the airpods and i'm watching my apple tv and i turn my head the sound starts coming out of this year because the TV's over there. Yeah. Who cares? Uh, yeah, I don't want That's that. That's silly. It's very silly. I, you could turn that off in the AirPods Pro. This doesn't do it at all. Um, the sound quality, though, is better, I would say, than the AirPods Pro. So you're giving up some Apple-specific features like transparency. This does have noise cancellation. It even has adaptive noise cancellation. Oh, nice. So if somebody talks to you, the noise cancellation shifts and you'll be able to talk to them and so forth. It's not as aggressive noise cancellation as the AirPods Pro. In fact, I'm not sure it would be as good in an airplane. I'll have to try this in an airplane. But it is air, it is noise cancellation. It gives you some 
isolation from your environment makes the music sound even better. You can turn that off. In fact, this has a lot of different taps that you can have four different taps, single tap, double tap, triple tap, tap and hold. And you can assign them to everything from turning the music up and down, next track, uh, activating your voice assistant, Siri on an iPhone, Google Assistant on a Pixel. Uh, you can have it uh, pick up the phone. This does support phone. This nice. is one thing. It might be a little bit better in the AirPods Pro, but this has uh, four mics in each bud. Two of them are bone conduction. So the idea is this is going to get better sound. I did record some sound if you want. Do you have sound from my uh, computer? This is I recorded uh, just uh, in a fairly quiet environment. So you can see this is a recorded directly from can the microphones that? in the mm -hmm. Denon Pro Pros. Oh, I Sounds don't know. I have not are. super rich and vibrant, but it's many audio okay, things. certainly for a phone call. It's a little, it's good. You can hear the noise cancellation actually working. Um, it's not full fidelity. Right, a little crackly. It's maybe a little bit better than the AirPods, but it's, it's interesting. They're trying to do something. The one place where it's really better is a variety of Bluetooth connections, including... Bluetooth lossless, aptX lossless, if you can find anything that plays it. In theory, that should sound a lot better than anything else out there. I think probably to most people, Apple's AAC256 is going to be as good, to be honest with you, uh, as Sony's LDOC is going to be as good. Uh, it does have a better battery life, eight hours on the earbuds and then 32 hours on 32. the case. So you basically can go forever. It's Type-C charging. Apple's rumored to be going to Type-C charging on the next generation AirPods, but right now it's lightning so i like it that it's type c charging will the battery life drop if you're using that better codec oh that's a good question it, in it's theory, hard to test because you don't have it yeah the, you the key to, ha to having any of the aptex stuff work is that's a snap it's a it's a qualcomm technology you have to have a snapdragon processor on the phone side or the player side and you have to have some specific snapdragon qualcomm chips on the earbuds side and i think they're fairly efficient in terms uh of, of receiving it, the, the most of the calculation is done in sending got right? it so that's where it would mostly affect your performance these are weather and sweat resistance um i you know a lot of earbuds have vocal cues for pairing and so forth these are very good it's a nice lady who's who's very explicit so she says okay now turn on the scan on your phone oh, that's and all that nice. stuff. so i i like that i think they're very good um i would say these are probably as good as you can get in wireless Okay. Okay. Uh, even better, at least raw sound quality than the AirPods Max, which I compared it to, and the Apple's AirPods Pro. Even the Max. Wow. Yeah. They're very good. They seal very well. They come with five different tips. There's lots of ways you can configure it. Um, the negative, I think, I think they're good looking. I don't know if you looked at this. The microphone, unlike the, um, unlike the AirPods Pro, there's nothing hanging out of your ear. So when I put this in my ear, in fact, it's great for sleeping. Because when I put this in my ear, it's flat. That's honestly what I was thinking about. Yeah. Just for sleeping. So you can actually, I don't know if you if you listen to AirPods. I listen with, to audio books when I sleep and I yeah, do it. So with... that was always the problem with the Air, AirPods. Mm -hmm. If you, thank you, she said, welcome back. Bluetooth connected. I like the prompts. So I'm now hearing music in this ear. But if I'm on a pillow. It's not pressing it's flat. up against. Yeah. And there's no, maybe that's why the microphone maybe isn't as good as the AirPods Pro. Because there isn't a boom coming out. But I think it works. Now, I'm going to stop the music by tapping once, and it stops, much like the AirPods. It's not, you don't have to do that weird stroking that you do on the AirPods to turn them up and down. You just tap. You just tap. One ear is up and one ear is down. For You can set it the way you want. Um, the negative is it's 150 bucks more than the AirPods Pro. It's $350. Uh, the surround is simulated. It's not real. And you're buying some technology that isn't yet widely available, which is Aptex lossless. So I forgot to mention. It's also wireless charging. So you can oh, nice. the bottom on your, on your Apple charger, your Qi charger, and it'll charge it. Qi supports Qi. So there are some definite positives to this. The price is going to be a stopper for a lot of people. Yeah. If I had to listen, if I were sitting here with my AirPods Pro versus the, the Denon Pearl Pros, uh, if sound quality were the most important thing, I'd probably listen to the Pearl Pros. But there are features on the AirPods you just don't get especially on the iPhone, things like that adaptive sound and mm -hmm. head turning and the true Dolby surround, which is, I think, quite nice on the Apple AirPods. So uh, I know you were, Benito, very interested in these. Did you know about the Neuro uh, Trues? Is that why you were interested or you just... I didn't know about that, yeah. but that sounds very interesting. Yeah. 
So this, when the neuro came out, people were crazy about this. It's literally raised millions of dollars just for these one point eight million dollars on Kickstarter, and then they sold the Denon, which I find very frustrating. That is frustrating. That. But the good news is now these are much more widely available. You don't have to wait in line to get them. You don't have to go to Kickstarter to get them. You can buy these direct from Denon. Although I think they're already sold out. The Pearl. There was a lot of interest when these came out. P E R L stands for personalized listening. And these are the pro models, which cost a little bit more. Uh, in fact, I think it's probably worth getting the pros. So way too much information, poorly presented. <laughs> Why do we think, though, that it takes so long? It seems to take longer for people to hop on uh, audio, the audio improvement train these days. Yeah. Is it because we're just all. Well, Apple settling? doesn't want to do it because it's Qualcomm, right? And Apple doesn't oh, want to be tied right. to Qualcomm. Qualcomm. So Apple's going its own way. Samsung doesn't want to do it because it doesn't it does use Qualcomm chips in many of its phones Exynos its own chip and others I think it also doesn't want to be too tight because then that's one more Qualcomm Sony thing it, yeah. of course has their own thing that they do so it's it's a weird space and I think there are people who don't like Aptex maybe because it's Qualcomm maybe because they think it doesn't quite sound as good I could tell you using Aptex adaptive which is the best I could get on these with the current devices that I have, including this uh, cute little dongle from uh, Creative, formerly Creative Labs. It's the same people, it's the Sound Blaster people. Um, it sounds better. It sounds very good to me. Hmm. Uh, it's richer, it's fuller music. The definition is better. The high end's very crisp and clear. The bass is remarkable. I think that's more the physics of the device than it is the actual uh, drivers. I think they put a lot of energy and effort into designing a, a, the best possible ear wireless earbuds wireless being the gating factor i think they've done a very good job so if you have a uh, aptex device to play that would certainly be a reason to look at this especially if some sometime down the road you get aptex lossless i look forward to hearing something in aptex lossless i haven't yet um maybe a asus zenfone 9 or the rog if you've got one of those phones this might be the right earbud for you this episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Future-proof your business, retain top talent, upskill your team, and gain essential insights with training for individuals, teams, and leaders. Stay compliant with regulations and identify risks and weaknesses before they become problematic. Fill out the form at go.acilearning.com twit for information on a free two-week trial for your team. 